Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to make a dynamic block. It's going to be an annotative block. With annotative blocks, the first thing to do is make sure that you're in one-to-one. -one. Your annotation scale should be set to one-to-one. -one. I've already made the polyline that I'm going to turn into my dynamic block, and I have some of my small style text. The annotation of this text is one-to-one, -one, so it just acts as a good reference to see how, how large my break line symbol is going to be compared to my text. I'm moving the block in uh, in the block editor because I'm going to move the base point of the block. So essentially, as far how, whatever distance I move the block right now, that's going to be my extension. I showed you in another video how to use actions, just in case you haven't seen that video. I'm going to show you the slow way and then the fast way. So the slow way is to first go into parameters. Sometimes you have to do it the slow way. Highlight the parameter, go into your properties, and adjust as necessary. In this case, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, leave both grips highlighted. I'm going to move this grip off a little bit because once I make the block, this base point is going to show up as a grip as well. So if I've, I left this stretch grip here, it would overlap the base point grip once the block is completed. And now I would just add my actions. I'm not going to show you how to do that. I'm actually going to delete this parameter. I'm going to go to parameter sets. There's a linear stretch pair that works perfectly in this situation. Now my actions are already in place and already associated with base points of the parameter. So for typical actions and parameter com combinations, it's always way quicker to use the parameter sets. But with th certain parameter action combinations, for example, a linear parameter and a scale, you won't. there's no parameter set for that, so you would have to do it the slow way, the manual way, I guess. For new users, it's good to use parameters and actions separately so you get a hang of what you're doing. But once once you know what you're doing, just use the parameter sets when they're available. Especially these down here, the lookup set, visibility, flip set, rotation. For me, these are always uh, always parameter sets. I never I never need to use them as parameters and actions separately. Anyways, I'm gonna set up my actions finally. Now one neat trick I'm going to show you really shortly, a lot of people don't know about this. I'm going to add a third stretch action to this length parameter. I'm going to use this to stretch the actual break line symbol piece of this, um, this polyline. Now when you click on these actions, the action has its own set of parameters. You can see down here there's a distance multiplier. I'm going to set that to 0.5. And you'll see what this does once I, once I save this block. So 
so as I stretch this brake line symbol, my, my brake line actually stays in the center of it. I would say 99 times out of 100, I'm going to wa want this brake line symbol in the middle of my um, of the middle of my brake line symbol, if that makes any sense. There are times when I'm going to want to slide this brake line symbol, so I'm going to add one more grip for that as well. So this third stretch action, I need to add this stretch parameter to its selection set and, and this uh, grip here. Close the block editor and hopefully that works the way we want it to. Let's see. Okay, so the only issue with what I've done is I've made that parameter too short. You can see how when I try to bring the symbol to the left of my brake line, it, it just disappears or it won't go. That's quite easy to solve. And if I'm going to do that, I, I need to fix my other selection set here. So I'm going to add my move symbol to the selection set. Okay, so that should function properly. So as you can see, once I move the brake line symbol, it doesn't it doesn't work quite as smoothly as I'd like. But in 99 out of 100 times this block, I'm, not, I'm going to be able to use this block without manipulating it too much. As you can see, if I move the brake line symbol to the left and then keep stretching, the block gibbles up a bit. But it's unlikely the user will actually perform that action. And additionally, if you make it very easy to insert your blocks, then they can just delete it and reinsert it. So the next thing I'm going to show you is I have this button up here, but right now this button doesn't do anything. I, in another video, I show you how to add my section mark to the ribbon and insert routine with macros. We're going to do just that same thing, but with the brake line. Okay, we're back now. All I've done is I've typed out what I think my macros is going to look like. The first line, we're using the dash insert command. The dash forces AutoCAD to use the command prompt version of the command, or a legacy version of the command. If we just type insert, we have the this new tool palette comes up. But if we press dash, or type dash insert, then it forces the command to use the command prompt. No dialog box will come up. These two symbols I have in front, all they're doing is one symbol is forcing AutoCAD's default alias for this command. If the user were to make a new alias for this or overwrite this alias, putting one of these symbols in front of it would would revert back to the original default AutoCAD alias. And the other one just makes sure AutoCAD calls the global version of the command. In different languages, different commands, line, insert, rotate, might be something completely different, but having these in front will will prevent um, any confusion when using international versions. I can't remember which does which, but I just put them both in front. It does absolutely no harm. This semicolon is the same as hitting enter. My second line is when the dash insert command asks for your block name. 
Now I could put quotation marks around this. It's optional unless you have spaces. If you have spaces in your names, you need the quotation marks. I hit the enter key again. A backslash in macro is, these allow, um, these pause for user input. So when I place this in my macro, and in this instance, it's asking for the insertion point, it'll pause and allow the user to click click in a location for the insertion point of the block. This next line, this is actually a one. This is the same as hitting one and enter. That's asking for my block scale. I want the block to be scaled to one. It's annotative, so the annotation scale essentially scales the block for me. And in this command, I want, I want the user to be able to specify the block rotation angle. And so I've put another backslash in here. With this section mark, of course I don't have I don't have that included, but I probably actually should. But since I don't have a rotation parameter on my break line block, I kind of need this. Okay, so let's go into the CUI. Let's see if this command that we've typed up actually works. I might have to edit it once I'm in there. Sometimes the dash insert command behaves a little bit differently if you use it in macro or auto lisp. And that might only be with some versions of AutoCAD. Okay, so into the CUI. So I already have my command made, of course. It was already in my ribbon, but let's add that macro. I'll see if I can memorize all that. Okay, so I'm taking a bit of risk making a video and trying to type that in through memory. We'll see how bad I screwed it up. So I always hit apply in my videos. You can just hit okay and it'll save it. Okay, so let's see if that actually worked. As we can see, I have to type one. It's asking me for the X and Y scale separately. So that's the difference between using the dash insert command through the command prompt and through macro. The sequence is a little bit different. Let's see if I uh, confirm my theory here. Yeah, as you can see, it's, it's not asking me for the Y scale factor, but that's an easy fix. I think I just have to add a A one and a semicolon. Also, if you're blocked, there's a there's an option for scale uniformly. I believe you have to go to the block editor to access that. I'll see if I can find it really quickly here. Oh, right here. Since it's annotative, it forces you to scale uniformly. If you're making blocks that aren't annotative, um, having this scale uniformly set, set to yes or no will change how the dash insert command behaves. Just be aware of that. Anyways, let's go back into our, our macro and see if we can make this work exactly like we want. In truth, I was kind of hoping to have a problem just to show you my process of solving these problems. So let's just add another one and enter. And let's see if that works. Hopefully it does, or I gotta re record this whole video. So it look, looks like it's working okay. 
So anyways, that pretty much concludes this video. Hopefully you found this useful. If you did, check out the videos, on, uh, the other videos on my channel. Thanks very much for watching.